Hello, friends, and welcome to a beautiful session that is meant to be um, sincere sharing from the heart. My name is Devi Mohan, and as the Global uh, Ambassador of Mohanji Foundation, as well as the president of our charity called Ag Foundation, um, I've decided to speak to you today um, merely based on my own experience and what is in my heart. Uh, first of all, there's a um, great, great excitement uh, to be with you uh, together in this beautiful group energy of the 2021 Parliament of World Religions. I have watched uh, several sessions um, earlier yesterday and today. And uh, even though this is a virtual event, it reminds me of a um, really great heart expanding experience that I had three years ago when I visited Toronto and uh, for the first time I spoke at the Parliament of World Religions. Um, for me, this is a um, truly special event on planet Earth because I believe in the power of uh, concerted action of that uh, standard rule where the attention goes, the energy goes. And um, I do believe we truly are uh, making a difference with this gathering in terms of our collective consciousness, in terms of our collective resolve uh, to uh, do something uh, great for our humanity today. So we, uh, we are now in critical moments uh, of history and evolution of humanity, a sort of um, multi-crisis intersection within humanity. And what's really special about this time is that divine ideas get more manifested. This is the time when we open our heart into the true beauty of unity and we reach peace through unity and we recognize diversity in unity. This is the whole beauty of the time we live in when internet, as you see, is helping us to connect heart to heart more than mind to mind. And uh, in that sense, more than the politics, uh, I feel what is of crucial importance today is selfless service, is the spirit of compassion of um, uh, being there for each other simply without asking anything in return. Uh, I truly believe this is one of the highest human expressions. Um, so I would like to start today with um, beautiful quotes uh, from Mohanji, who is my inspiration, uh, my husband as well as my spiritual master, the founder of a beautiful platform called Mohanji Foundation. Uh, that um, allows many people across the globe to reach their authentic expression in the way they wish to serve. So we have different platforms within Mohanji uh, Foundation, some being art, some being yoga, some being social service. Uh, today I will focus on the aspect of social service and uh, Ag Foundation's uh, contribution and some of my um, experiences and insights that I gained through selfless service. Uh, so put, uh, the rec to put the record straight, um, I would like to start with a quote from Anji in which he says, when we live for ourselves, we are spending our spiritual bank balance. When we live for others, we are earning our spiritual bank balance. It's very, very simple. Now, many people are not aware of the spiritual bank balance. We are very much aware of our actual bank balance physically in physical reality in the bank. But our spiritual bank balance is actually more real. And um, in the year 2000, I had a blessing of undergoing a near-death experience where I clearly saw like the whole summary of my life through different um, little movies that were like all around me in expanded multi-point awareness. And as I passed through all of them, uh, I got this powerful insight that it's like everything is recorded, everything we ever do, and especially things um, that we did for others unconditionally, especially those uh, moments in time when we did something from the heart that carries the true vibration, that actually confirms that only love is real and only love. Uh, creates that bridge between the physical reality and our actual reality when we return home as souls. Um, so investing 
in our spiritual bank balance, investing in our rise in consciousness is the greatest thing we can do for ourselves and for others. Uh, this is not some idealistic thinking. This is actually the truth. And I have witnessed that at that point when I was came out of the body. And at some point, uh, I was sent back. It was not my time. And I was told it is not your time yet. You have not fulfilled your mission. And your mission is to serve the unity. So I came back at that time I was working for United Nations in Kosovo, uh, where um, actually my life was in danger every day. And um, my intuition sharpened and my horizons expanded. And I knew that I will stay alive, even though my life was at risk, because my mission is to serve the unity. And since then, I've been searching for like deeper layered meanings of what it means to serve the unity. It wasn't just the United Nations. It wasn't just the promise of the UN Charter, which is very close to my heart, because I feel, I feel humanity in my heart. I love diversity. I, I love um, being human and serving humanity. And that's why Monji uh, Foundation, we say our highest religion is humanity itself, uh, because truly being human means being compassionate and feeling that everyone is a reflection of ourselves. So that brings me to a second beautiful quote of Monji, which is, when we understand clearly that all that we ever share in this life is all that we ever have, so we can only share what we have, selfless service will become the priority of our life. Whatever we ever earn from this world is temporary and transitory. We cannot own anything on earth forever. All that we share stays with us as grace. So our life actually starts at a point when we consciously choose to serve. And this is very, very powerful um, as a realization for all of us. Um, the, we are, uh, <clears throat> beginning of life, we are taught to be in this compensation spasm. It's like a little hole is there inside and we keep filling, filling it in with things we want for ourselves and what we want to earn in terms of um, money, resources, uh, beautiful clothing, car, house, degree, diploma, respect, reputation. It's all for ourselves, we're just taking. But our true life starts at a point when we start serving. And this is very powerful to, to note. Uh, so that brings me to the third uh, quote. Uh, I will end there with my quotes for today, <laughs> where Margie says beautifully, having clarity of purpose is a blessing. Having purity of intention, selflessness, compassion is grace. Being selfless is an expression of spiritual maturity. When we have the highest possible uh, uh, purpose in, uh, in human existence, which is living for the world selflessly and unconditionally, there will never be a depressing moment in life. There will be no dearth of energy or lack of inspiration. This is a clear sign of success and life lived to the fullest. So. Um, I started uh, my journey with Mohenji Vidak Foundation back in 2007, um, when after I earned my master's degree in America and I had many options for my career uh, in the world of diplomacy, um, in the world of international affairs and so forth, I came to Dubai, um, I got a job, but I was eager to serve. And this was a promise I made to myself way back during the war days when I was a refugee, that if I ever regain myself in terms of my stability and finances and so forth, I would serve. Um, however, sometimes our social services kind of loses its actual flavor if it's within a huge organization where we simply do small little jobs or we just press the button and we send money. Uh, what's really beautiful is to be in charity hands-on. This is something what I wanted. I wanted to be there personally, myself, handing out 
the aid or whatever it is that we are donating, seeing the eyes at the receiving end, connecting heart to heart, soul to soul uh, with, with the recipient of aid. That was what I wished, uh, not just to kind of do it routinely. Uh, so um, I came to know about Mohanji. It was just one of those synchronicities of life or destiny, if you have it, because when we have a pure intention, it actually takes us on the right path. And I feel that this very desire to serve has taken me uh, on my true path. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for just this one pure intention from the heart, which is to serve. Uh, so um, at this point, um, I would like to just share a bit of who we are and what we do so that you have a graphic graphical <laughs> idea of um, the kind of charitable work that we do through the ACT Foundation. And then I will continue with the sharing. At any point in time, if you'd like to ask a question, you're most welcome. Um, okay, so um, I will now share uh, just a very brief um, presentation, uh, which is actually more about photos and um, uh, just so for you to kind of get the idea of uh, who we are in Ag Foundation. Now, Ag Foundation um, started its global journey outside of India in 2012. Until then, it was active only in India. And uh, right now, we are active in 22 countries of the world on all continents except Antarctica. <laughs> okay, so we focus on uh, education, food, environment, health healthcare, and shelter. Um, and this uh, two pairs, uh, this pair of two beautiful eyes is the soul of Amu, uh, who is the soul of Act Foundation, uh, our beautiful angel Amu, uh, who tragically left this world uh, in the year 2000. Uh, but she is the power behind Act Foundation, or Act is actually an acronym of Amu Care Charitable Trust, founded by Mohanji um, in honor of Amu. Uh, so the, the whole story of Act Foundation is about rising above victimhood and grief into higher purpose, higher meaning, and finding that higher meaning for ourselves through oneness, through social service, losing yourself in service to truly find yourself indeed. Uh, right now, this is how we look like. <laughs> this is just one of the many photos from our charitable initiatives. Um, you can see uh, Mohanji right next to me on this photo. And here is our beautiful daughter Mila, who is also with us on this journey from since she was born and uh, has brought a lot of healing to Mohanji and his parents after Amu left them. Amu was run over by a truck at the age of four. And naturally, uh, aside from the charitable work, it was also Mila who came with her loving presence and brought the healing. And it's beautiful that now as a family, we are on this path together. Um, so uh, I won't read now in detail our mission and vision, but just want to say that um, the vision is to create a better, better world through a selfless service that uplifts and transforms both the giver and the receiver. So our foundation is not just about us giving aid. Uh, it's about witnessing the magnitude of transformation uh, in both the receiver and the giver. So us as givers, um, in, uh, we are blessed to be in a position to give. We are not just there to help someone. Uh, we take it um, as a great blessing to be in that position to experience the magic of that moment. Uh, because transformation happens at both ends, not just the giver, but uh, not just the receiver, but also the giver. Okay, so every year the magnitude of work increases. And uh, just in terms of food, uh, you can see that we've had um, more than 100% increase since 2019. And now it is going to be even more from what we can see from the statistics for the year 2021. Um, so at least another 400%. Um, our unprecedented expansion happened uh, last year, and we reached 10 new countries, um, different continents. So I'm just going to show a couple of images just so you see 
the beauty of the entire magic of selfless service through act. So here is Yavanava tribe in Amazon forest. And I love um, this uh, lady is called Vashi. And in the midst of that crisis and hunger, she came on our Zoom camera with all her feathers and that big smile. And they're just so grateful for anything they get. So they're not in poverty consciousness. They are the servants of the lungs of Mother Earth. You know, they're just going through crisis because of COVID. They couldn't sell their little products that they make all the time. And then they had floods. And so there were a lot of crises. And we were so blessed to be there for them. Ecuador, there are many, many families we have um, supported. And here you can see in the middle, Maya. She's from my country, Serbia, but she lives in Ecuador. And you realize that all it takes is one dedicated volunteer, <laughs> one person whom you can trust for the sake of transparency in terms of dedication. And that one person will then inspire others. This is at the core of Act Foundation. We have never had uh, membership fees. We never had sponsors or we have not formed around a rich person who funded anything. There was nothing. It was just Mohanji's pure intention to do something grand uh, in the name of Amu, his daughter. And all of this came, all of this got manifested around the globe. And we are so honored to be on that train of selfless service. So here's Peru. Uh, in Peru, we are working on empowering um, the indigenous people to start growing their greenhouses. So many children, they eat only potato. They have nothing else to eat. And uh, this was heartbreaking when we first went from, we just went to, to Machu Picchu, Mohanji, myself, and other 80 people. We were there for the Machu Picchu pilgrimage. And then we met these people. And since then, we've been doing our best. So here is again, um, Mirella from Croatia. She's our number one volunteer for Peru. And through her, there's an entire team of people. Then we have Venezuela, Ethiopia. Here is a beautiful family that carries um, the, uh, the load of the entire charitable work in Ethiopia. So it's all like one big family across the globe. Russia, we, uh, we got one beautiful um, volunteer who lives in Macedonia, Tatiana, and she reached, reached out to the orphanage in Russia. In fact, this is Siberia. So <laughs> we are reaching so far across the globe and just sending our love, pouring, pouring out uh, as much as we can. Then in the Balkan region, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Then we have Spain. Uh, so these are all the countries that we have expanded to uh, just uh, a year ago. Qatar, I was there myself just before COVID started, and it was just amazing to um, reach out to hundreds of uh, construction workers who did not get a cooked meal for quite some time and uh, ostracized in that environment in the Middle East. So it was it was amazing to, to reach out to them and to... Uh, connect as one humanity. Uh, here we are in Slovenia as well. This is where I live, by the way, <laughs> in a beautiful uh, little place called St. Anna. Okay, so um, here I just want to highlight that what we do is all often achieved in partnerships as well. So Nexus Communitarius is an amazing charity uh, that's helping us with the community in Kankani in Peru. And uh, we had partnership with Rock of Hope in South Africa. And we were uh, during COVID, there were babies adopted from the streets. Literally, there were uh, teenage girls abused, became pregnant, and then threw away the children in the bushes. But there was a lot of that happening in South Africa. So during COVID time, it was really a challenge, but it was amazing to uh, join hands with uh, other NGOs. And I hereby invite any of you watching this, if you'd like to join us, do visit actfoundation.org and we'll be happy to work with you, um, provided that we have the same uh, rules of transparency and philosophy of work. And um, we've done uh, some beautiful birthday fundraising through Facebook. I, I was really happy to start this my previous birthday and I really like to speak about this um, it's very powerful to choose to celebrate our birthdays through charity. 
uh, it's very, very special feeling. You really get to experience the beauty of birthday in that way. Uh, so um, I would like, I wanted to highlight that. And uh, during COVID, we also did our best to um, promote this immune boosting packs. Um, it was just one of those small things that we can do uh, to reach out to the needy uh, because aside from everything else, you know, um, lack of nutrition or that, if there are products that support the immunity natural way, we are all in for it. And uh, just to end with our uh, <clears throat> other platforms connected with ACT, this is ACT for Hunger. Uh, so it, they are all about food beyond species. Uh, so animals, human beings, all served unconditionally. Uh, and it's literally across the globe and connected with various other platforms within the larger Mohanji Foundation platform. Um, so this is all only about feeding. And we have this amazing new initiative called Fruit Tree Plantation Drive. We're going to have one in Zagreb uh, just 10 days from now. Uh, so I look forward to it. It's a great feeling to be planting fruit trees, um, whereby you could actually create a source of food for other beings as well, uh, and of course help our environment. Um, and as I mentioned, greenhouses. Now, aside from just the greenhouses, there is another amazing project called Coherent Water, a company called Analema. And uh, we have partnered up with them to uh, grow um, vegetables being watered by coherent water. So um, that's another special uh, thing. And we live in a time where we have to move from chaos to coherency and water that we drink, if it's coherent, it helps us. Okay, so here's another beautiful uh, celebration of Mohanji's uh, birthday, and we celebrated all of us across the globe uh, in uh, donating thousands of kg of food and thousands of meals uh, in uh, the name of Mohanji. So that was a beautiful uh, birthday celebration. Again, something that we really encourage other people to do as well. Okay, so that's uh, about the Act Foundation. <laughs> Okay, so I, I wanted to uh, share this with you just so you know uh, who we are. Uh, but I wanted to continue this presentation sharing um, the essence of charity for me is not just um, you know doing something because other people are doing it or uh, donating money or food. It's also about recognizing how special it is to be in a position to serve. Um, maybe if you're watching this and you don't have funds at the moment, I want to share something with you. When I had crisis, I was in Dubai uh, in 2005, six, and at some point I suddenly lost my job. I had a huge debt on my credit card. All of it happened, um, you know, very fast without me understanding what happened. I just found myself in a really dire situation, and that time. Uh, I applied this knowledge. I already had it in my heart and I applied it. And instead of despairing and, um, you know, panicking and feeling sad, I just left all my job. I applied for some jobs and I surrendered that. And then for three days, I just did social service. Um, in that moment, my frequency changed. And the third day of doing social service, I met a man who knew another man who worked for a company that urgently needed an office manager. I went there, job interview. They said, we need somebody to start tomorrow. I said, I'm ready tomorrow. And that's what happened. So as Monji said at the beginning, you can only share what you have. So if you're sharing even a little bit, you have that. You are, you are having what you're sharing. And if we understand that, we will never have bad relationship with money. Because when we are in selfless service, our relationship with money changes. The energy behind money, the energy of abundance. So there's never a person who is poor. There's a person who is in a poor relationship with money. <laughs> the very principle of flow of energy is through something that we call money. So for abundance, this is it. Uh, at the beginning of this talk, I mentioned that we actually start living when we start sharing. That's when we uh, realize the essence of life and what it is that we are searching for. Because all of us 
are searching for happiness, but it doesn't, it doesn't come unless we feel the fullness, unless that inner whole, insatiable whole that exists, the composition spasm that I mentioned, unless it stops. So when we enter the space of giving, we realize that uh, we have all that that we are searching for and that we are a cup that all flows. So when I met Mohanji, I was really blessed to gain a deeper understanding uh, of, our, of consciousness and why in India they say that the avadutas or the masters who live in complete renunciation, uh, their state resonates with the following words, within myself, I have everything and I need nothing. So I'll just let that sink within myself. I have everything and I need nothing. If we enter into that frequency, into that awareness, we truly enjoy life. And if we enter to that frequency, that will be just an expansion in consciousness. It will not be an end to anything because we have gone beyond the ego. So that is why in all faith traditions, social service was uh, honored as one of the key aspects of our spiritual evolution and our actual fullness of life. Uh, another uh, topic I wanted to share with you is um, peace and unity of peace, because the name of this um, uh, presentation is also from fear to freedom. So freedom, if we define it, define it as having everything and needing nothing, being the cup that overflows, being here to share our knowledge, our talents, our unique, authentic expression, and simply sharing that, then only we get everything back and we gain the higher purpose which takes us forward. Uh, but just three days uh, before uh, this uh, event, before Parliament of our religions, um, I woke up in the morning and I was um, pulled to like some WhatsApp groups uh, on my phone. And I don't have much time to go through all these different WhatsApp groups all the time, but something intuitively pulled me. And I really take my intuition seriously, uh, knowing uh, how, how much it meant to me in the past. And uh, in, a, in a group called Unity Earth, which is uh, one lovely platform from Australia, uh, with whom I traveled to Jerusalem for a pilgrimage and participated in, in a beautiful program just before COVID. Uh, they mentioned uh, a talk by Avon Mattison. And I've never heard of uh, her, uh, but I felt that something pulled me there. I came to know that that was the time when she left her body. She left the earthly realm. And uh, that was her last speech. And she uh, is the co-founder of Pathways to Peace and the uh, Universal Peace Day, which was adopted 40 years ago by UN as the day when we celebrate peace. Now, uh, why is this important? Because it weaves everything together into uh, the power um, of uh, peace in unity. Exactly what we are doing now with the Parliament of World Religions. We are creating a focal point. We are all coming together as humanity uh, for a higher cause with the purest of intention. And this is powerful. It is said that if we have 1% of population on earth who stand for universal peace, for universal harmony, that it's already enough to create that momentum in the collective consciousness. So I hope that today uh, we have done that together. And um, I give honor, I honor the soul of Ava Mattis and I, I promise that we do this today because she has inspired me. Her speech, uh, you can find it on Unity Earth YouTube page. Uh, her speech was so beautiful. Uh, she said, peace through unity and the understanding that practical actions of peace in a collaborative, conscious, unity way is the only way forward. Uh, so this is something I want to share. And um, I want to... Um, uh -huh. um, 
mentioned that behind the scenes, there are people who play a great role for humanity. They are the ones, just like this lady Avon, they are the ones who had powerful vision, who had that focus, that consistency, uh, persisting focus to do something uh, that's part of that greater vision unconditionally for all of us. So Avon said that she was not sure that she will ever see the fruit of her actions uh, materialize, nor was it important. But she has met many refugees, and I myself was a refugee in uh, 1991. And she, she said, <clears throat> there is something about the aspect of the promise of the UN Charter. Um, next year will be the 40th anniversary of the Universal Peace Day. And the hopes of all these people that I met is that they know we are carrying their purpose in life. Because everyone who has been in the war zones and other such places, whenever I ask them what they want and what their purpose is, they would say peace. And peace is not a noun, it's a verb. It's an active, conscious state of concerted action that is for the benefit of all beings. This is so powerful. And, um, you know, it just brought me back to exactly my days when I was 14 years old. I felt this way. I, I was one of these children that she met, you know, through space and time. It's all connected and all of us are so interconnected. All of us uh, light that spark in one another sooner or later. Um, and that understanding of our interconnectedness and how alive it is, is what brings me to another aspect, um, the teachings and life of Nikola Tesla. Uh, just like me, he is a Serb from Croatia, and I'm sure you would have heard of Nikola Tesla. I, I really believe that uh, as a humanity, we missed a precious opportunity. When we had Nikola Tesla, we were not ready for his inventions. We could have had free energy at that time. But as humanity, we allowed that the um, you know, agenda of certain individuals who are behind the lobbies, behind the um, oil production, you know, individuals who carry certain power within the circles of politics and so forth, they are the ones who won in that moment. Uh, but Nikola Tesla, um, did everything selflessly. He dedicated his life to the betterment of humanity. And um, what we learn now in, in school or what we know about Nikola Tesla is only up to, up to his experiments at the Niagara Falls. Uh, but after that, he spoke about ether as reality. And ether is exactly uh, what he based his entire science on and we are not yet at a point of understanding it because when we understand what ether is uh, it's not the fifth element it's actually the first element because everything is interconnected through ether everything is interconnected and that's uh, where we as humanity as a whole can connect in a whole new way through consciousness which is why Consciousness is the key aspect that leads to unity and peace. That is why I chose the path uh, of experiential spirituality, not politics, because this is what I believe with all my heart and soul. I was just finishing my master's degree. I had quite many job offers uh, back in 2004, but I came across the book Autobiography of a Yogi. And reading that book really struck this deep chord and I understood what am I doing you know where wh what is the timeline that I'm going to adopt what is the vision of myself and my life and you know if you're watching this right now uh, I just want to inspire you that at any point in your life you can choose a different timeline and you can choose a different destiny for yourself if you just find that one thing that excites you so for me, it was serving peace through helping people rise in their consciousness, uh, helping people rise in their selflessness, because I believe that this is the only way out for all of us. 
Otherwise, we have very little span of time left, left before we lead Mother Earth into destruction. And we will not be allowed to destroy much longer. So as a humanity, either we will wake up within this existing timeline, or we will miss that opportunity. And that's why it's important to understand ourselves within the context of Mother Earth, of one humanity, uh, respecting our religious backgrounds, our ethnic backgrounds, the whole story. It's not about nullifying on it or any of it, but finding that golden thread and honoring it and celebrating it and taking uh, responsibility. Responsibility is our ability to respond to a situation. So when I saw the petition, you would have probably noticed the petition of the Parliament of World Religions. I really loved it. Uh, it spoke about our ability to respond. It spoke about us committing um, not to part, um, we hereby commit not to partake in insensitivity, greed, and fear on earth, but to commit to a world that is nurturing, sustainable, and just. Uh, so we, we were asked, each one of us, to commit before our very consciousness and conscience to commit to concrete actions what we are going to take. Um, to, to write it down, promise ourselves, and start walking. So this is the time when we get to manifest this new reality for ourselves. And this is the time when we get to walk. So each one of us can take this responsibility and start walking. This is the whole point. And this is the whole point of the parliament. We are not here to discuss. <laughs> we are here to implement and act, just like what we do in our Act Foundation. We act, we don't preach. We lead by example. So to be in that frequency of someone who leads by example, we have to come out of, of, of that inherent, um, what, what's called in India, tamas or lethargy, a complacency. One of the greatest sins of humanity at the moment is superficiality. So I don't have time to watch this 45 minutes. I have only one minute video on Instagram and I ship to the next. So we are not digesting the food we eat. We are just, we have become superficial. But to actually uh, start the living, we have to look ourselves in the mirror and we have to ask ourselves, what have I done? What is my, how high is my ability to respond? Where am I blaming others? Where am I not taking action? And every action counts. As I said, as what I saw in my near-death experience, even the smallest of actions done selflessly, they do count. They count very much. So um, I hope that this presentation um, has uh, inspired you. Um, I wanted to uh, end with one experience that I had recently. Um, you know, I have, um, I was in Serbia and uh, I was in a hurry to complete some documents, um, notary and so forth. And I just stopped to check on Google where is the nearest photo uh, store where I can take a passport photo. And an old lady knocked on my window. And uh, at that moment I looked and I saw this old lady, a nobody, right? <laughs> But because I have this training and this, uh, at least this awareness that any opportunity to serve is a golden opportunity, I stopped everything and I decided to pause and to open the window and see how I can help her. I thought she was gonna beg for money, but she didn't. She had teary eyes and she was in a, a state of distress, clearly. And she said, somebody stole my trash bin. <laughs> So for a moment it looked funny okay it's like she's so distressed that somebody stole her trash bin um so i was thinking like oh my god okay uh so i said i'm sorry so you mean the one uh the municipality owned trash bin for the, for collecting trash in front of your home she said yes yeah, somebody stole it and now i have nowhere to throw my trash i can only use small plastic bags and I knew at that moment there was something behind this story. It wasn't just the trash bin. 
So for uh, uh, I told her, well, you just need to call a number. You know, there's an office for this kind of matters and they will help you. They will bring you another trash bin. She says, I don't know how to use that, that phone uh, with, I don't see well and my son hardly visits me, even non, not even once a month. So I understood that she needed, she needed attention. She needed somebody to care. You know, it wasn't about the trash bin. So I gave her my time. I called that office. I got all the details she needed. I wrote it down for her, uh, patted her on her shoulder and I told her everything will be okay. And when she had ended her talk, she said that she's a refugee from Croatia. And, you know, it was not a coincidence because I was also a refugee from, from Croatia back in 91. And I realized just, this was my point is just the silly moment you feel like, oh, right, somebody's knocking on my window. I don't have the time. I'm in a hurry. I was so happy I didn't dismiss her because I closed the circle in that moment. You know, I was there for someone who felt that by somebody taking a trash bin away from her, that touched that painful impression of her losing her home, of her being helpless. And somebody was there who stopped, took time to talk to her, give loving support and, and make her feel loved. You know, so this is um, an example that charity and selflessness is not just about us being part of some big initiatives. It's about recognizing that moment in time uh, when we can actually do something uh, for others and not missing it. So maybe you don't have the money to donate, but maybe you have a talent you can share, or maybe you can just take a moment to go to an old age home and just be there for the people and pat them on their back and talk to them. You know, so this is what we have lost in the busy world of a contemporary lifestyle, we have lost our humanity. We have lost our ability to respond to the big issues we see happening in the world, thinking I'm too small to be you know, dealing with that because who am I to you know, handle the issue of uh, uh, global uh, climate? And, uh, but maybe you can become vegan and maybe you can you know, stop contributing to the meat and dairy industry. For example, this is like a step that we can do. We can do many steps if we choose to come out of complacency, if we choose to embrace our ability to respond. And um, to end, I wanted to share with you something beautiful that uh, Nikola Tesla said. Um, he said that death does not exist. He spoke as a scientist. Death does not exist. And by that very knowledge, the fear of it disappears. And remember, no man who existed has died. They have turned into the light and as such still exist. The secret is that these light particles return to their original state, return to one of the previous energies. Christ and some others knew the secret. I was looking for a way to preserve human energy. And he was working for free energy for all of us. It is one of the forms of light in the soul, sometimes equal to the supreme celestial light. I I'm, I'm, have not sought this for myself, but for the good of all. I believe my discoveries will make people's lives easier and more bearable, directing them to spirituality and morality. So I'm happy to end this presentation with a noble soul who was among us, such a humble human being. He gave everything he had, all his time was completely dedicated to service. One other such person I see is Mohanji, and I'm so inspired. Uh, you know, I sometimes look myself in the mirror and I feel, have I done enough this day? Mohanji says, just ask yourself, what else can I do for the world? Maybe we are not as sharp intellects as Nikola Tesla, but we can learn from people like Nikola Tesla that we can have that intensity. You know, we can really have that intensity of action and purity of intention, because that will lead to our selflessness and to fulfillment. Thank you.